Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is part three of Doyen. This is the Miracle X Mail listener. Enjoy. It's not that simple, he said again, suddenly feeling very defeated. It was hard to explain to her how husky pack dynamics worked, but she was so stubborn and headstrong that even if you did explain it, she'd probably have said the same thing as what she'd just said now. That was just her style. That night, you lay awake while she slept peacefully beside you. You couldn't see any other way around this. Doing a surprise attack wouldn't work, and doing an open attack wouldn't work either, and by the morning time, you had already resigned to the fact that this was going to be your career ender, or actual life ender. Miriko could tell that you were still off about it in the next morning and tried to get you to come around, but to no avail. You'd completely shut down emotionally. That day and the next were setup days, where you met with the team that were going to switch in after you and Miriko had captured the Subirables, and they all seemed overly confident in your skills as a hero and by proxy their ability to pull this off. This is going to be an easy job, you heard one guy say to the other. Once you get the power team together, there's no room for failure. You felt guilty. You couldn't tell them that this was a doomed mission. Everyone else was on a high except you. You had told them about the plan to shoot you, should anything go wrong, but they all ignored your comments, still blinkered by your previous successes and not believing that you could have any vulnerabilities. As the days rolled closer to the mission day, you retreated into yourself more and more, partly because you didn't want Miriko to be too attached to you at the end, but also partly because you didn't want to be too attached to her either. The morning of the mission came and you hadn't slept at all. To everyone else you looked relatively fine, but to Miriko she could see that you had already been defeated. If you don't pull yourself into line, I'm going to punch you so hard you'll see carrots, she seethed from beside you while you waited in the office with the others. You know it's bad when you get punched so hard you see someone else's god, you joked dryly. She didn't buy it and punched you square in the arm. You didn't move. You hardly felt her hit you, it felt so numb. She knew something was very wrong. The leader of the raid came in then, to debrief everyone, and you stood there looking like you were listening, but in reality, you really weren't. Why did you need to listen? You were going to your death with this job anyway. It wasn't long before you and the team were in the back of the unmarked van heading for the Siberables lair, and you stared at your boots for the entire trip. Better that than the team get too close to you, it would make it harder for them to shoot you in the end if they were emotionally invested. The van slowed as it approached the next drop point, and a hush fell over the team members. The air in the van became thick with excitement and anticipation, a feeling you had come to love, but today it just made you feel sick. Okay, squad A to flank, squad B to escape points, the leader drilled, making sure his team knew where they were supposed to be. I wonder who will end up shooting me, you thought as you looked up at each man in turn. Each one gave you a small smile or nod of acknowledgement, and you felt like you were going to cry. You didn't want to be there. Miriko nudged your arm hard and you looked at her. She gave you her signature grin and held out her curled fist to fist bump you. I'll see you again after, she said, smashing her fist against yours way too strongly for your current liking, but you knew she was hyped for this. She lived for this kind of thing. Now out of the van, you followed her to one of the back windows that had been blown out. This was where you would enter. Meekly, you jumped in after her and followed her down the darkened hall to the room at the end. As you got closer to the door there, you could hear voices from the other side and she paused, only for a split second before jumping and kicking the door down with both feet. Okay, you lot, time for a thrashing. Who's up first? She said loudly, adopting a fighting stance. You stepped in behind her and a whisper rustled through the gathered members of the Siberables. Well, well, a loud voice said with a sneer, and you looked slowly up into the face of your older cousin, Karuno the Doyen of the Siberables, the one you feared the most of this group, the one who was going to be the catalyst to your death. Look who's come to say hello, if it isn't Wyan the hero. The way he said it made the rest of the gang laugh cruelly and your ears flattened out a little with defeat. Ha! Mirako scoffed. Wyan is three times the man you'll ever be and he's going to prove it today. Is that so? Karuno scoffed back, crossing his arms across his chest. And what about you, hero Mirako? What will you do when he doesn't prove it? You two are in a relationship, no? What would happen if he were to kill you today? You stiffened, fear gripping every inch of your being. You had feared this. You had feared him controlling you, but what you feared the most was that what his control was going to do to you. You knew he would draw out your inner husky, your primal being, and reduce you to nothing more than a mere member of his pack. In the wild, rabbits and huskies didn't mix well. In the wild, huskies ate rabbits. Why in? Any last words? He asked you, and you dropped your gaze to the floor and shook your head. Very well then. Kneel! 
he barked, adding a long, haunting howl on the end of it, the sound penetrating your ears so swiftly it felt like a knife was being driven into you. You felt your chest tighten, and then your lungs constrict, and you tried to breathe, but it wasn't doing very much for you. <sighs> no, you thought in a panic. This was all happening too fast. You hadn't even had a chance to say goodbye to Mirko. This was it. But no sooner had you had that thought, your mind went blank, and you felt a calm wash over you. There was no more fear, no more worry. You didn't feel numb. You felt the opposite now. You were hungry. You wanted to eat. You wanted to run. Energy leapt within you, and you looked up at Karuno. Good, he sneered. Welcome home. His voice called to a deeper part of you, and you felt drawn to him. You felt like he was your safe haven. Anything he said, you would do. Are you hungry? He asked you, and you nodded your head, your eyes glazed with that look of a basic canine. Food is right here, he said, gesturing to Mirako beside you. Eat, he commanded. You looked across. There was indeed a rabbit hybrid right there. She looked delicious. Yum. You thought as your mouth fell open and saliva ran from between your teeth. You took a step towards her and she turned to you. Don't shoot! She hollered into the room, alerting the other Siberian gang members that something was up. You lunged at her and she jumped, kicking you firmly in the chest with her powerful back feet, her kick barely doing anything as you fixated on her. Yep, that's the end for now. I'll see you next week for part four. This is where it gets interesting. I'll see you then.